Go ahead, go ahead. Hello. Yes, sir, I am good. Okay. Unfolding bud. So the poem is stated about unfolding board, bud. So which is written by whom? Which is written by Naoshi Kuriyama. One is amazed by a water lily unfolding with each passing day, taking on a richer color and new dimensions. One is not amazed at a first glance by a poem which is as tight closed as a tiny bird. Yet one is surprised to see the poem gradually unfolding, revealing its rich inner self as one reads it again and over again. Now, if you talk about the poem unfolding bird, right? So where we find out the poem which is written by Naoshi Koryama. So the poem contains the theme. What is the theme? The theme that one should not give up. Give up means one should not surrender or one should not means uh, uh, read the poem or poetry right away, right? And have not uh, means have not given any kind of uh, understanding. So sh shall not give up. The meaning of give up is called as a quit. So one should not uh, quit in reading poetry right away. Suddenly you cannot quit reading poetry, right? It may take time to understand the deeper meaning of the poem. So what happened actually, generally when we read poems, right, or poetry, we do not understand the depth meaning present into that poem. So, and what we do? Now, we uh, simply read the content and we ignore our understanding on the deeper meaning of it. Or sometimes also we ignore reading poetry. The poet Naoshi Karyama tries to point out through this poem that it may take time to understand the deeper meaning of the poem. But ultimately what happened? Ultimately, when one understands it, understand the poem, one is felt very happy to have the kept or, or to have kept the patience till the end. That is what the theme you would find out. And when you go to the poem, you will find out that what one is amazed by a water lily unfolding with each passing day taking on a rich richer color and new dimension so what the poet tries to say through this poem the poet makes a comparison in the poem so the poem compares the flowering of water lily we know that what is that water lily Water lily is nothing but flower like a lotus on the surface of water, right? That is what water lily. And when we talk about dimensions, it means we are talking about the proportions or size. So the poet says that while comparing that the flowering of water lily to the process of understanding a poem, the poet describes the beauty of the poem, while the readers are also able to see how a bird turns into a magnificent flower. So the poet compares understanding the poem like understanding or as understanding the birds of the flower, right? So birds, you understand? That's something called as a, means a, oh, one after another bird of the flower or called as a means part of the flower. So the poet says that when you see how a, a bird turns into a magnificent 
flower. So in the beginning stage or in the initial stage, you find out the flower is nothing but a bird, right? But after that, what happened, it turns into beautiful, magnificent with the richer color and the proper size of the bird turning into a beautiful flower. The poet says that in the second stanza, that one is not amazed at a first glance by a poem. So like the second stanza is stated about the poet's interpretation, the poem, and the poet makes an analogy with the flower using with the poem. So he said that one is not amazed. Analogy means relationship, right? Relationship. So comparison and relation, similarity. So that's what is appointed. So one is not amazed at a first look by a poem, which is as tight closed as a tiny bird. So the poem is at the initial stage is exact, exactly like a bird, which is tightly closed and looking, uh, looking like a very small in size. But once it turns into flower, it produces nothing but a different, different uh, birds into different parts of the flower and looking excessively beautiful. So that's what the poet says, that we are amazed at the increasing beauty of the water lily as we watch it unfold at its own pace. So you will find out that the flower with its uh, means a pace. Pace means what? That called as a speed, right? Like today it seems bird. That doesn't mean after 30 minutes or one hour, it will turn into flower. So you find out that if it is bird in tonight or in evening, then in the morning it turns into a flower or maybe it takes one day, right? So in that case, it takes time. It takes time day by day. An ordinary looking bird, right? An ordinary looking bird opens out to reveal petals of delicate shade. So ordinary looking bird opens out to reveal petals of delicate shade. It means what? Now, when you say that, uh, <clears throat> when you say that one is not amazed at a first glance, first look by a point, which is as tight closed as a tiny bird. So he wanted to say that means if you observe, right? What do you find out? Now, the comparison between lily flower with the ordinary flower, right? And the poet says that bird opens out to reveal petals of delicate shade. Delicate shade means what? That's called as a delicate means smooth. Smooth sheds. As it grows bigger by spreading its petals wider and mesmerizing. Petals. So what do you mean by petals? So these are, this is something called as a petals after petals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like that. These are called as a petals. And, yes. these, and these petals turning into wider and mesmerizing. The meaning of mesmerizing is called as a, uh, excessively beautiful or means uh, uh, fascinating, attracting with its uh, stately elegance. Stately elegance means that's something called as a, on the existence of beauty present into it. So in the third stanza, the poet state, yet one is surprised to see the poem gradually unfolding, revealing its rich inner self as one reads it again and over again. So that is what the poet say, that like the bird of the, uh, like the flower bird, which is means at the initial stage looking very small and also close in all side, tight. At the same time, when it takes the time day by day, it turns into flower, petals after petals, and the beautiful size of the petals, mesmerizing the minds of people. Similar to that, one is 
but one is surprised to see the poem gradually unfolding. So poem is also like that. When you read it again and again and again, so it will make you surprised to see the poem also gradually unfolding. Right? So though we are not amazed with one reading of a poem, yet one is surprised to see the poem. So we are not amazed with one reading of a poem. The poem may not impress at first look for it is like a tightly, tightly closed lily bird and its complete meaning is not disclosed on the first reading. You cannot get the complete meaning of the poem at the first reading. However, by reading it over and over again, we are able to enjoy the multiple levels of hidden meaning present in that poem. So that's why, yeah. So the poem teaches us that a poem needs to be read again and again, slowly, right? So uh, to understand and appreciate it, that's what it is stated. As one reads it again and over again. So what happened? Now you will understand and appreciate the poem. So here the word unfolding bird, right? So, or the word unfolding brings out the similarity between the flower and the poem. Especially the poet used the water lily and with the comparison with the poem. So in that case, while the bird unfolds, while the bird, bird is called as a, the flower's initial stage unfolds or brings out or reveals its colors, the poem also unfolds to reveal its beautiful inner quality, right? inner essence. That's what the poet tries to state in this poem. Am I clear? Do you understand okay. that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm. So that is what the poet tries to tell in this poem. Okay. Now tell me that. Okay, from this. Sorry. From this chapter, I have a question. Yeah. That uh, name the figure of speech used in the poem, unfolding bird. Hmm. Name uh, name the figure of speech. So, what kind of a figure of speech do you find out in this poem? Figure of speech means it is uh, literary devices. Mainly when we read. When we read it, it is compared to a water lily. Like when the water lily petals are opening like that, when we read the poem over and over again, it reveals a beautiful inner essence of meaning. Mm. Okay. So, what do you call to that? What do you call to, uh, call to that poetic device? What do you call to that? If I say... Hmm, go ahead. Poet's name is Noshi Koryama. Okay. Let me point out. The poem contains with uh, some of the poetic devices. What are the poetic devices it contains? Poetic devices. Now, if you observe carefully... The poem carries the poetic devices like uh, metaphor, right? And uh, you can say simile, simile, then personification, personification, and also you can say imagery, imagery, right? These are the, you know, uh, Poetic devices you find out in this poem. Okay. So let's see that how uh, the first thing is called as a unfolding birds carries with a simile. Right. Isn't it? What is that uh, simile is all about?
What do you mean by simile? Simile? Hmm? Don't. Okay, what, uh, what do you mean by a metaphor? What do you mean by the metaphor? Okay, how many verses of poem? Uh, how many verses are there in this poem? How many verses means how many stanzas are there? Three stanzas. Okay, so. Uh, <clears throat> Do you find out any rhyming scheme is presented or not? The rhyming. Water lily unfolding, day, color, dimension, amazed glance, poem, closed bird, surprised poem, unfolding, self, it, again, again. Right. Now you find out that the poem doesn't carry any poetic means a rhyming scheme, right? <clears throat> yes, sir. So, if you talk about that unfolding uh, birds, right? So, what do we find out? Do we have any rhyming scheme or not? I didn't understand your question. I'm asking about a rhyming scheme. Do you find out the rhyming scheme of this poem? No. How do you draw that if this poem doesn't uh, how means how you can't identify the poetic uh, devices? See, rhyming scheme is what actually. The rhyming scheme is something which is indicating as a when you are talking about the last word of each line is connecting with the next line's last word. Right. If we I talk, didn't understand. So I am talking about a rhyming scheme. Rhyming scheme means generally we say that no, uh, that called as a a b a b, right? Or a a a, uh, a b c d uh, a b c b, right? So that is called as a rhyming scheme. Generally, like the rhyming, for example, name like honey and bunny. Yes. Like that one. Yeah. So here we find out amazed and water lily, unfolding and the day, so color and the dimensions, amazed and the glance. So the last word of each line. We don't find out any of the rhyming scheme in this poem. So we can say that it is a blank verse. So what kind of a rhyming scheme in this poem? This poem doesn't contain any rhyming scheme. It will be called as a blank verse. What kind of a verse? Blank verse. B -L -L -N blank word. Blank verse. Blank word. Blank verse. Blank word. Okay, sir. Mm. So the rhyming scheme it does not carry the rhyming scheme. It will be called as a blank verse. Now, okay. uh, so I have already pointed some of the idea here, right? When you are talking about a simile, first it's called as a simile. So, a poem is compared to a tiny bird, isn't it? So, yes, it, it is compared with a what? Now it is comparing with tiny a bird. tiny bird, right? So, therefore, it will be called as a, the figure of speech is called as a simile. So, not only tiny bird, it is also stated as a tight, tightly closed. So, what kind of a rhyming scheme you will find out? That's called as a tiny bird. Tiny bird, right? And also as tightly, tightly closed. So, as it is used with the term called as as, you can see that it is used with the word called as as, therefore it is a simile, right? So, it is trying to say that a tiny, a tiny bird as tightly closed. Right. So you can see that one is not amazed at a first glance by a point which is as tiny closed. Isn't it? So in that case, it will be called as a 
what you call to it, it will be called as a simile. S I M I L E. Simile. Simile. Can you explain again? I can't. Means I didn't understand the meaning of simile. Can you explain again? Yeah. Simile means what? The meaning of simile is called as when you are comparing any of the object, right, with any any other object, right. You compare one object with the other object using with as or like, right? When you are using as or like to make a comparison, make a comparison between comparison between uh, one object to another object, right? So then. You use what simile? You call it as a simile. Like here, you will find out that the poet is compare so tiny bird with a tight clothes, right? So tiny bird is compared with what tiny uh, tight clothes. So therefore, the word as is the indicator or as indicating that it is a simile, right? It is a comparison. Simile means what? Simile means it's a comparison. As or like to make a comparison between one object to another. Yes, one object to another one. Now, uh, the next one is called as a, uh, if you observe that there is an interplay between comparison and contrast. So interplay between comparison and contrast, what do you mean by that? Now, if I am saying that comparison and contrast, so, like you can say, while the bird stops at being a full-blown flower, right? When the bird stops at being a full-blown flower, flower, the poem, in contrast, continues to provide new enjoyment with every reading, revealing finer nuances of meaning and form. So, it's indicating as a comparing and contrast. Like you are saying, no, what what you uh, what you say here. Look into it as tight, tight closed as a tiny bird. This indicates as a simile. As tight closed as a tiny bird. Right. Then after it is stated that means while the bird stops at being a full blown flower, one is amazed by a little water lily unfolding with each passing day, taking on a richer color and new dimension. One is not amazed at a first glance by a poem, which is as tightly closed as a tiny bird, yet one is surprised to see the poem. So here you would find out the word, yet is used for the contrast purpose. What is that? That called as a contrasting. Right. C O N. Sir, your screen has been paused. Pause means the screen is uh, sharing, but it is stopped in one place and it's very blurry. I think uh, you have a problem with the network because I am using the Wi-Fi, right? So can you uh, means, uh, leave and then join again?
हेलो Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Now you can see. Can you see? The screen is black. Screen is black. Okay. Yes, now I can see. Is it visible? <laughs> Yes, sir. Okay. So, I was just telling the same thing. Right. When you are talking about the poem, so what do you find out? Here you find out the simile is given and simile is called as a as tight closed as a tiny bird. So, the comparison of bird with the tight closed. Right. Second thing is called as what? If you talk about that, the poet also used Lots of imagery, right? Imagery means what? Like uh, if you uh, talk about images, right? Through the words, the poet is trying to show the kind of uh, natural images. Like if I am talking about imagery, so we can say that the sight means the picture that you see, the sound that you hear, the taste that you get, the touch that you feel, the smell that you draw, right? So these are called as a kinds of imagery. And here, if you see that, here you would find out the poet is used the word called as a water lily, right? And richer color, different color. So the poet also stated about at, at a first glance, right? It is also stated that to understand the tiny bird. So, and... These are the words can be called as a imagery, right? Beside that, if you talk about that uh, metaphor, metaphor means that direct comparison, right? So simile is using with as or like to make the comparison, whereas metaphor is called as a without uses of as or like. Then the next one is called as a repetition. Right. So if you look into that, the poet repeat the word called as again and again. So these two words repeated twice to point out that there is a repetition present into it. Again and over again. Right. So even you also feel that one is amazed by a water lily unfolding with each passing day taking on a richer color and new dimension. One is not amazed at a first glance by a point which is as tight close as a tiny bird. Yet one is surprised. One is surprised to see the point gradually unfolding, revealing its rich inner self. Right? As one reads it again and No, I'm just uh, delivering this. Right, means I'm just trying to make you understand. Repeat the poem again and again to draw the idea of means smell or called as images, the comparison which are presented in the world. Okay. Uh, can you tell me that uh, any questions of this uh, this particular topic? One question I have told. And the second question from this chapter has given is uh, how is the poem similar to a water lily? Mm -hmm. How? How is a how is a poem similar to a water lily? Mm. Since how poem means means I want to tell that. How water lily means how the water lily is a means first word. First, the water lily will be like a tightly closed 
tiny bird then it will what as the changing of time the bird will be what it will uh, it will convert and it will change its colors and its dimension like that poem like that poem like that poem when we read it first time we can't understand the poem we can't understand the meaning of the or meaning of the poem when we read this poem again and again in the lot of time time then this poem reveals its inner subject of meaning and makes and encourage the reader to read it over again and again okay okay uh, so, correct or uh, any words in added no no yeah. you have pointed that how is a poem different from a water bubble lily unfolding bird isn't it yes sir ah. so in that case you can say yes the poet now she koriyamma uh, in his poem stated about unfolding bird compares a water lily bird to that of a poetry so you can say in his poem he uses significant metaphors significant metaphors means that called as a significant uh, significant comparison or direct comparison which stands out and is made attractive to the reader he describes poetry with that of a growing plant so how does he compare poetry with the um, means uh, <clears throat> plant is the indicator of this poem so you can also say that the poet compares the poem and the lily much like a flower the beauty of a poem grows gradually through the comparison the poet shows how the poem starts with the hidden messages in it waiting to the blossom and reveal itself and once it blossom everybody admires and uh, respects the true beauty of that poem which was hidden inside so like that or in the same manner if you compare with the flower so flower is means in the initial stage covering with the bud right too tight but day after day means the petals that come out from it seeming the beautiful elegance mesmerizing appearance of the complete flower isn't it It is, yes sir yeah, yeah. okay any other question last question in the poem is why is it fascinating to watch a water lily blooming why sir i sent the question in the chat okay That's for no. Already we said that's for no. It's not typing. Okay. Okay. Why? Okay, you are saying that why it is attracting uh, to why work. Why is it fascinating? Ah, oh, fascinating means what? Attracting, no? Watch it. Yes. Ah, oh, water lily booming. So yes, what do you find out in that? This is the very easy questions. Wait, sir. I want to tell you something. See, the thing is that. when you say why is it fascinating to watch a water lily blooming you can say that it is attracting or it is fascinating to watch a water lily blooming because it takes days to you know prosper or bloom it takes days to spread out its petals after petals and turning a richer shade with each passing day Richer said with each passing day, so that's what you will find out that, right? That is the region. It fascinates to each one to watch a water lily blooming. 
the first thing is called as a means it takes days after days to bloom spreading out its petals and turning a richer set with each passing day right that's the reason it is considering as a means uh, fascinating to watch a water lily okay so similar to that just like the water lily a poem also two rivers its beauty slowly provide uh, slowly providing richer meaning with every reading okay any other question no no only no only this three questions understood the point clearly yes sir okay so i think it's 10 o'clock now right so we'll meet tomorrow okay sir so um we have cleared your doubts okay. all yes sir thank you we'll meet in the next class that is tomorrow so and i'm going to also give you some questions uh on this point you will just write them and send the answer to me okay Okay, sir. Bye. Bye, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. Yeah. Hey, bhai, so.